On the 25th of April 1915, 20,000 Australians and 3,000 Kiwis made an amphibious assault on the Turkish beaches of Gallipoli, a place few had heard of until this day. Within 24 hours the siege had become one which would last for over eight months, resulting in over 11,000 Australians and Kiwis being killed in action. On the first day of battle, Diary entry by Private J. Shout. 1st Australian Infantry Battalion. 23rd of June 1915. After four days and four nights without a rest. At last I am relieved and go back to the rear for a few hours rest. All the way along the trenches there is always that stream of wounded coming back from the front line. Despite my fatigue, and now that I have the leisure, I still cannot sleep. The night is awake with the sound of the wounded, and sickness setting in brought on by the constant presence of flies. It makes eating what food we have very difficult. Diary entry by Lieutenant Franks, 1st Australian Infantry Battalion, 5th of July 1915. We advanced out of our trenches toward the enemy line. Our shells were shrieking over us and bursting in front. It was a creeping barrage of bursting lead advancing as we moved forward. Enemy shells were shrieking over us and exploding behind. Enemy gunfire cut down our whole front line within minutes. It was nothing, short of suicide. Diary entry by Lieutenant Charles, medic of the NZ Medical Battalion, 8th of August 1915. If there is one thing that I want to forget, it is the advance on the 8th of August, and my poor brother lying dead by his gun. But sad as it all is, I cannot recall him without a feeling of honor and pride. He died as I always knew he would, fighting like a tiger, and with defiance on his face. Diary entry by Private Tui, NZ Mari Infantry, 12th of August, 1915. We have held the summit of Chunik Bear. For now, from our trenches, we can see the Turks moving into position. Their numbers are a terrifying sight. I hear he ordered to fix bayonets. The Turks are coming. The men, although nervous, are focused on the fierce fight that is sure to follow. I tighten my grip around the handle of my mounted machine gun. And wait. Dear Mrs. Williamson, it is with real sorrow that I write this letter, as I am afraid I have very bad news about your husband Corporal L. Williamson. Your husband was helping a fallen soldier to a place of safety, as he was wounded during an attack we made against an enemy position. Please know, 
your husband played a very gallant role during this attack. However, he was himself hit by a bullet. It pains me to say that your husband died soon after. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. I can assure you that there is not one who doesn't feel his death as a personal blow. He was an excellent soldier and a fine example to all. I wish I could help soften the hardness of your sorrow. If there is one comfort, then it is knowing that at least he gave his life in a sacred cause fighting for right and justice. Let pride mingle with your tears. We laid him to rest in a military cemetery by the side of several of his fallen comrades. His soul commended to the loving care of our Heavenly Father, who will keep him until that day when you will find him again, never more to be parted. With deepest sympathy, Chaplain Hughes.